Loving greetings to you. I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation, and a special welcome to you if you're here for the very first time. And you should be aware that our approach is non-Western psychological. I used to be a divorce mediator. In 2001, I saw the light when clients asked me to help them save their marriage instead of break it apart and give the kids to each other and all of that. And so I did a deep dive into marriage. First step was to ask my psychologist friends, okay, what should I do? How should I do it? And all of them basically said the same thing. Just listen. See if you can help them bridge some of the gaps in their lives and their communication. And that brings us to the topic, how to talk to a spouse without arguing. So obviously when I'm a divorce mediator, I saw a lot of arguments and I can tell you exactly what happens that creates an argument. And, and it's very revealing because an argument doesn't begin with the first person speaking. Never. The argument begins with what the second person is hearing. And I would say a minimum of 90% of the time, the first person didn't mean to be offensive or trigger anything. They just stepped on a hornet's nest without knowing. Why? Because we tend to turn over our lives to our inner habitual reactions. I'm going to say that again because it is so important. For this topic, this is one of the most important things to keep in mind. That it's our internal habitual reactions, habitual reactions that launch us into arguments. The reason is this. Our minds are a product of either our soul's wisdom and love or our body's drive to survive. Those are the two influences that sort of generate where we're going to come from. Now, if you're a saint, <laughs> not like me, but if you're a saint, you're constantly in a state of love. That state of love is where you want to be with your spouse all the time. So when you are, when you consciously choose to be in that state of love with your spouse all the time, no matter what they say, instead of your inner habitual reactions jumping in and defending you, which is what the drive to survive is all about, what will happen is you will care about your spouse's condition. Are they okay? Why are they feeling the way they're feeling? What can I do to take care of them? And when I say take care of them, I don't mean you have to run out and do something for them, but you have to be considerate of where their state of mind is at the moment and then put that ahead of how you're going to respond to them. So often, and I'm going to give you some tricks, by the way, for avoiding arguments. And you know, the topic is how to talk to your spouse without arguing. So number one, let's go to, you have to talk to them about something. Be aware of where they're at when you want to speak with them. Be completely considerate of where they're at and don't bring up a hot topic. In the trade, we have what are called hot topics. Don't bring up a hot topic when they're already in an unsettled state. That's just foolishness to do such a thing. So if you have to bring up something important, Move slowly into that topic. 
Maybe ask a question about that topic. Maybe, but do it in a way where you're not setting them up because they'll know you're setting them up. Do it in a way where your first priority is getting a sense of where they're at with that particular topic. And not so you could refute it, but because you want to know where they're coming from. You know, we're individuals. And oftentimes people mistakenly believe that when you get married, you're supposed to be on the same page about everything. That's incredibly naive. We're never on the same page about anything, but we can become aligned with our spouse with almost anything because it's no big deal. Years ago, somebody wrote a book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and Everything is Small Stuff. Here's the qualitative difference between us at the Marriage Foundation and virtually everyone else who is helping people with their marriages, and this is not to put them down. But when I got started, as I said, I talked to my marriage counselor friends and I didn't like what they were responding to me with, that I should just ask questions, da 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 da, because it felt to me like they weren't helping the couple progress. So I had to ask, well, what does that mean to progress? To progress means to move towards achieving the very reasons we get married in the first place. People get in a state of breakdown with their connection and their relationship simply because they don't ask those questions in the beginning. Why am I married? What is it that I wanted out of this marriage? I found that there's a universal answer to that. There's three things. Number one, we want to be happier. We want to be happier than we are remaining single. Number two, we want to experience that love that we felt when we realized this is my soulmate. And that love is not of the mind, it's of the heart. It's very beautiful, very deep. And in this world today where Western psychology has taken over, it's been lowered to the status of an emotion, but it is not an emotion. Now, I cover all these things of what is an emotion, what's the mind, a hierarchy of um, mind, soul, and body. I talk about all that in my books, and especially in the courses we have for both men and women, they're separate courses, to help people understand what you're dealing with. But the three things that you get married for, happiness, love, and harmony, we don't even think about that in in these terms. We're, we're oblivious to that based on the teachings that were given. But when I tell you that, you go, yeah, yeah, of course. It is an of course. And so our communication should also be striving towards achieving happiness, love, and harmony. If those are your pole stars, then the chances of an argument are nil. But if we are ready to defend our turf, if we are ready to prove our spouse is wrong and we're right, then we're going to have arguments. It's that simple. So all of the little tricks have to be under the umbrella of, I want happiness, I want love, and I want harmony. And I'm married to my soulmate, so I want it for them even more than I want it for myself. Right? Now that you hear it out loud, yeah, but the mind's going, oh, no, 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 no. What about buying boundaries? What about this and that? We're not Western psychology here. We don't care about boundaries. You're building the connection of love between the two of you. This connection is a union, union. Marriage, you see, it all ties together. So I'm going to ask you to like this video right now. Don't wait. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this channel right now. The reason I ask 
is not because I'm on some ego trip and I really want you to validate me. No, I don't need you to validate me. Frankly, I'm, I'm good, but I want to reach more and more people. The Marriage Foundation is growing. We already have over 72,000 subscribers. You won't be one of 72,000. You'll probably be one of 100,000 pretty soon. But you're helping us because of the algorithms and all of that stuff, which totally is over my head. You'll help us reach more people, so please do so. Now, also go to our website. If you have a question for a counselor, it's a free service we offer. We're nonprofit where you ask a counselor, you could ask your question and download the top 10 do's and don'ts for marriage and visit us again. It's so good to see you. God bless you and take care. Thank you.